In this video, we are going to find the minimum value of square root of x squared plus 4x plus 13 added by the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 41. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. Whenever I have to find the minimum value of some expression, I will first see whether that expression is actually differentiable because there is actually an algorithm to find the minimum, which is if you differentiate and you set the derivative to be zero, then you can solve for x and um, sometimes minimum or maximum might occur when x takes that value. But for this particular expression or expressions of similar kind, there is actually a much quick quicker way to do it. So let's see. For the quadratic expressions inside the square root, I'm going to complete the square. So for x squared plus 4x, I'm going to add an extra 4 to these two terms so that I'll have x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then to balance the, um, the expression, I'm going to subtract my 4 as well. And so I'll eventually have x plus 2 all squared plus 9. Well, for the second part, it's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus 16 again to balance the whole thing. The reason that I chose plus 16 is because when I see minus 8, I anticipate it to be x minus 4 all squared. And so the 16 is just the 4 squared that I need to add into those two terms. So I have x plus 2 all squared plus 9, and x minus 4 all squared plus 25. Let me add the square root signs back to it. We're supposed to add them up. Now, in fact, for the first square root, it's actually very close to something uh, called the distance formula. So let me zoom in. So I can interpret this as the distance between some point, say I say x0, and then it's minus 2, and then 3. So because 9 is also 3 squared, so then with sum of squares and the square root of it, so it's easy to think about um, distance formula. And in fact, x plus 2 will be, I can treat it as the difference between x coordinates, so x and minus 2. And while for 3 squared, I can say that to be the distance between 0 and 3 or minus 3 if you like. But that's in, not important because we can always um, be flexible on that. And similarly, I can do this on the second square root as well. That would be the distance between x0 again, because again, we have x minus 4 all squared, and then we have 5 squared. We do not say distance between x, y, and some coordinates, because we do not have a y in this expression, only x. So for the y coordinate part, I'm going to let, I'll treat, just set this to be 0. And then for the second coordinate, it's going to be 4, because I need x minus 4 all squared, and 5 for the y coordinate. So then I'm actually adding two distances. The first one is between x, 0, minus 2, and 3. And the second one is the distance between x, 0, and 4, 5. So let's construct the coordinate plane and see what would that give us. So minus 2, 3 is about here, while 4, 5 is somewhere here. So minus 2, 3 and 4, 5. Now for any point that's of the form with coordinates of the form x0, it will be somewhere here. So actually, I'm finding distance of these two line segments and to add them up. Now, I'm going to kind of 
like make use of the flexible property that I have on the sine of these two coordinates, it can actually be plus or minus three, plus or minus five. So at this point, I'm going to kind of reflect um, the point minus two, three about the x axis and make it down here, minus two, minus three. Because if we try to reflect this, let me erase this line. Um, I'm actually not drawing very close um, according to scale, but you can see that from this diagram, we are actually very close to achieving a straight line. Indeed, if I label the three concerned points again, we have joined two of the segments of the triangle formed by these three vertices. So these three vertices can, of course, form a triangle and the blue segments form two of the sides of this triangle. And of course, this is the third side, not drawn to scale at all. Now, if you want to find the minimum value of the sum of the distances of the blue segments, there, in fact, the minimum actually occurs along the black dotted line. This is because of the triangle inequality. Which says that whenever what triangle we have, the sum of the lengths of the two of the sides among the three of them must be larger must than the third side. So in particular, if I choose, if I pick the two shorter sides, I add the lengths up, it will always be larger than the longest side. And the equality will hold when I move the points such that they actually form a straight line somewhere here. Not really, not necessarily to be negative, not drawn to scale, but just to let you have an idea that I'm aiming to have the three points to be collinear. They can form one single straight line. So the mass that we need to work on would be to find x such that these three points, minus two, minus three, x zero and four, five to be collinear. And that should be much easier than calculus. So let's see what answer will we get for the x. The first thing that we need to do is to find the equation of straight line formed by joining the two points that we've already known, minus two, minus three, and four, five. So the slope or the gradient of these two points should be five minus negative three divided by four minus negative two. And that is four over three. So the equation of the straight line is y minus 5 over x minus 4 and that's equal to 4 over 3. This is the point slope form. So y minus 5 equals 4 over 3 times x minus 4. And simplifying we have y equals 4 over 3 x minus 1 over 3. And so it remains to solve for x this unknown labeled in yellow at the top left corner of the screen. So when y is 0, 4x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1 over 4. So that means I'm going to achieve a straight line when I pick x to be 1 over 4. And that means the distance the sum of the two distance should take minimum when x equals 1 over 4. So therefore, minimum occurs when x equals 1 over 4. But that's not the end because we need to find the minimum. So therefore, the minimum value of the sum of the two square roots should be, 
I should recall that to be x plus 2 all squared plus 3 squared plus x minus 4 all squared plus 5 squared. Now I'm going to replace the x by 1 over 4. And so let's compute. So for the first square root, it's 9 over 4 all squared, 81 over 16 plus 9. Well, for the second square root, it's minus 15 over 4 all squared, so 225 over 16 plus 25. So then summing up, for the first square root, we have 225 over 16, so that's 15 over 4, added by the second square root, we have 625 over 16, so that's 25 over 4, and our final answer is 10.